Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to a really interesting and exciting story. This is during the Iran-Iraq war, the phase known as the tanker wars phase. This is where Kuwait here was operating oil tankers through the Persian Gulf and as it passed Iran, Iran attacked the tankers. Kuwait reached out to the US and the US agreed to protect the tankers in an operation known as Operation Earnest Will, where it would operate carrier groups from the Gulf of Oman here. In August 1987, a carrier group led by CV-64 USS Constellation was operating here at a station known as the Gonzo Station. On the morning of August the 8th, a US P-3C Orion was operating here, surveilling shipping in the Persian Gulf. An Iranian ground radar at Bandar Abbas here detected the Orion, and the Iranians deduced that the Orion must be colluding with Iraqi forces to destroy Iranian shipping. Remember, we're in the Iran-Iraq war at the moment. As a result, Iran decides to shoot down the Orion. They send out a single F-4E Phantom II from a military base near Bandar Abbas. The aircraft is operated by these two aviators here. The Phantom flies low, 700 feet, and fast, westbound. They do this to hide themselves in the bad weather of the day. The idea is to use the bad weather to hide themselves from surveillance aircraft. Once roughly level with the Orion, the Phantom turns south, staying low to steer point 2. At steer point 2, they performed a high power climb to attack the Orion. Once within 10 miles, the Phantom fired at least one missile, an AIM 7 E 2 Sparrow. At that point, we cut to the Americans. The American carrier group had an E 2 Hawkeye stationed approximately here, race tracking and surveilling the area. The powerful radar on the Hawkeye did indeed spot the Iranian incursion. It first sent signals to the Orion to turn south here and proceed max speed to get away from the Phantom. As well as that, two F-14 Tomcats were operating in the area as cap over the Strait of Hamuz, flown by Lieutenant Commander Robert Clement and Lieutenant William Bear Ferran, and this was Ferran's first combat sortie. The Tomcats were armed with three variants of the AIM-7 Sparrow and Sidewinder variants of the time. The Hawkeye vectored the two Tomcats west of maximum speed to intercept the Phantom. When the Tomcats were within about 10 miles of the Phantom, they opened fire, first with an older variant of the AIM-7 Sparrow, the F variant, but the motor failed to ignite and it fell harmlessly into the water. A second Sparrow was fired, but I'm not sure what happened to this Sparrow. Then a third was fired, one of the more modern variants. This did track the Phantom. Now we'll cut back to the Phantom. And it's important to recognise that this is all happening at the same time in those few vital seconds. So the Phantom has fired its missile and the missile is tracking the Orion and it's travelled about halfway so far. It's important to remember that all missiles fired on this day were semi-active radar homing missiles. This means that the firing aircraft must keep the target aircraft locked with its radar until impact. If it loses that lock, the missile will miss. While guiding its missile to the Orion, the Phantom's radar warning receiver suddenly chirps up. It warns the crew that it's detected missile guidance signals from its port side. That could only mean that a missile of some kind was attacking it, and the Phantom crew pulled hard to the right, max power, and dived for the deck. In doing so, it broke the lock with the Orion, and the missile it had fired passed harmlessly by. How close to the Orion, no one knows. Back to the Tomcats. The third missile fired had successfully tracked the Phantom, but yet again a technical problem. This time, the proximity fuse failed and it detonated several hundred feet behind the Phantom. A fourth missile was fired. This one did indeed track the Phantom fine and did not malfunction. But due to the parameters in play, the speed, aspect and altitude of the Phantom, as well as that of the missile, meant that the missile detonated just slightly too early. It was enough to damage the empennage of the aircraft, but not enough to fully destroy it. Just two, definitely three more feet closer to the aircraft, and it would have destroyed the Phantom. We have actual pictures here of the Phantom in its house. You can see the port rear stab damaged by pieces of shrapnel from the missile. So that was an extremely 
close call. I should say I've put the full story linked in the video description if you want to go and look at the fine details. The aftermath is that the Phantom returned to Bandar Abbas or its military base. The Orion had a close shave but was not hit and the F-14s returned to the carrier. Now that's a happy ending. There was a lovely big dogfight and no one actually got shot down but it didn't really end happily. Due to the nature of fog of war, especially at the time, during their debrief, the top brass determined that the Phantom very possibly never actually existed. They concluded probably that the Tomcats fired at ghost signals provided by their AWG-9 radar. This resulted in at least one of these pilots leaving the Navy. What we know now in 2024 is that there was actually a Phantom and it did actually fire missiles and indeed the Tomcats did actually save the Orion. And that's the story viewers. Um, now on to our reenactment. Now we have to change things a bit with our reenactments because I have to serve a certain amount of pilots. So we're going to change history a bit while sticking to the key story as best we can. The Orion is going to be exactly as it was in real life. The Phantom is going to be exactly as it was in real life doing exactly the same things but it's multiplied. There are now four Phantoms instead of one because we need more of a challenge. Along that line, we are not going to start in the Strait of Hormuz because we want a bigger challenge. So Pip, we today are going to operate from the aircraft carrier directly. When the Hawkeye detects the Phantoms, we'll be directed to take off. At that point, we have to transit 160 miles as fast as we possibly can on a heading of 300 to intercept the Phantoms before they shoot the Orions down. And that's literally all we've got to do. I've tuned the mission so that theoretically, if we do everything perfectly, we might just get there to save them, but it has to be perfect. I've not tried it myself, so I don't know whether it's actually perfect, and that should provide some excitement. Guys, we will be equipped with what they were equipped with in the real sortie, so unfortunately, no Phoenix missiles. It will be Sparrows of the time, and it will be Sidewinders of the time. Welcoming viewers, I actually designed this mission for about eight Tomcats, and only three have turned up, which is amazing. So Simba, Fire, and myself, and Cannibal will be GCI. Hello, boys. Hello. 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 Right, we haven't tried this, and like I said, I have no idea if it's even possible, but I'm pausing now. Right, guys, get your junk ready. Um, it'll be after about a minute. The Tomcat, uh, sorry, the Phantoms will be spotted, so just get your junk done now. Right, I haven't flown this in a while, so just got to get my stuff all done. I've got that on, I've got that on, I've got that on. E2C, Iranian aircraft incursion detected. Scratch, scramble cap head 304 for 160 miles. Simba, go, go, go. I'm off. Roger, real GCI, you can take over. Gotcha. Taking off. All right, Simba, is that you in the lead? Hey, firm. Right, 304. Now, it's important we optimize. Like I said, I've done some rough calculations, and if we get to Mark II, basically, we should maybe just get there in time, but we're going to fly absolutely beautifully. Right, let me know when you threw the soup and what level it is. Set my data link up with the um, Overlord. Through the soup, Angels 15. Passing through Angels 23. Somebody just super climbed in front of me. Roger, I'm a little yeah, behind that's you guys. me. Oh, I see you, I see you. Right, very good guys. I'm on a slightly lower profile because so I'm setting up some junk. Three hostile contacts now. Bearing still 315 for 152 nautical miles. Roger, I suggest um, setting us an intercept course to the Orion, because we know they're going for the Orion. Simba, am I just going up through your 12 now? I'm just going to work out who that is. Uh, yes. All right, I'll... Just um, came up in front of me. I will let you uh, just take the lead. The Orion is 296 magnetic for 125 nautical miles, 20,000 feet. Roger, two back on burn. 
record again. Right, who remembers when we drop our tanks, guys? Uh, it's safe to wait till 14. Drop. I mean, it holds 16 internal, but... I'm right behind. I'm below you and behind you. Nails. Watch out. One o'clock. Right. That four showing up on RWR. Yeah, I was going to say. That radar's. Lead F4 has turned in towards the Orion. Roger, distance between lead F4 and Orion, please. Distance is four seven nautical miles. Roger. Closing quick. The Orion has not turned to the south yet. Roger, are we leveling off, Zimba? Uh, we're about to start a half G push. All right, starting the half G push. This will help get us through transonic. Shit, I just lost. Tanks are gone. Visual. Now go Zimba. Oh, that must feel uncomfortable. Right, Mark 1.1. 1 .1. All right, 1 .1. I'm through transonic, starting to climb again. 1.2, roger. Are you with us, fire still? Yes, sir, I'm about a mile behind you, I'm good. Mark 1.3, nice, that got us real fast, real quick. Right, something on our radar, that's friendly. We've got the Orion on our radar. Yep, the uh, F4s are, looks like just opposite of him. Roger. Stop the E2 second. is between you and the Orion. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Then that's the E2, it's just E2, opposite right, of them. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're miles away, aren't we? Yeah, we're getting out of this. 12 o'clock. Right. Setting up and, a work pilot. Uh, um, nails, 1 o'clock. The Iranians are now less than 30 miles from the Orion. 30 miles. How far are we away? You are 93 miles. 93 miles. Roger. Have you? Sorry, I've been just busy setting my own stuff up at the moment. Right, I'm going to configure myself. Okay, E2 says P3 turn south immediately. So that's when they would have actually been spotted in real life. Right. Friendly, bra. Three right, zero angels, zero, do intend to set up. Miles. Set up. Angels set up. Set up. Set up. I'm at 38. We're good with that, yeah? Yeah, 38, 8. Right, dump your tanks if you haven't already. Order pilot on. The Orion is now 299 true, 81 nautical miles. Lead F4 is 307, magnetic, 309, 89. Uh, just bear in mind, Simra, I'm on your left shoulder and I'm on the autopilot and I'm going out and copy from it. I shouldn't, I'm sure I won't hit you, but just be aware. Right, viewers, let's see what's going on. Okay, F4s are, ooh, 20 miles. This is happening faster than life of 40. Okay, they're doing their high power pull up. Now, on a tail chase, viewers, they'll need to get within about, I don't know, four miles to actually be able to hit with one of those missiles. Is our vector, oh, right, I see all the targets now anyway. Yep, we need to start coming slightly left. Okay. Just to the lead two target three degree is the biggest threat. Do you want to go for the lead target, Simba? Yep. All right, in that case, I'm going to go for the second target. Bye, go for the third target. Second target is turning towards you. Right, I'll take him. Right, got to figure out. Enemy target ahead, friendly target ahead. Two more bandits just showed up on radar. Roger. Make that four F4s. Oh, I got uh, nails on our nose. I don't know what you're going for. And, oh, nails. Lead F4 is now 14 okay. miles. Uh, what do you do? Target. STT lock, extra menu, hit choose specific target. Roger. Okay, I've got the wrong one. Go for another one. I have the third one locked. Roger, I'm trying to get the... Okay. Second one locked. I have a lock. Yes, I've got the second one locked. Distance for me is 50 miles. Simba, you might want to fire just to push him off of the Orion. What uh, what model? M sevens do we have? M's? I think so. Yeah. You got about all kinds of problems getting the right lock and the right Fox guy. Fox two. Nice. Fox two. Wow. Ambitious. Sorry, Fox one. You got it. Let me have that guy. Let me have that guy. Got him at TT. Target. Whatever I do, I lock miles. Simba's guy, and that is annoying as hell. Review is doing my best. Roger. He's turning, the lead F4 is turning off of the uh, Orion. Uh, I'm showing uh, nails 10 o'clock and um, nails 12 o'clock and right. nails 11 o'clock. Can you switch you to second it. guy? I can Locking only get first and third guy fire. 35 miles. Copy. That was fire. I'm only getting two targets Welcome. right now. Yeah, God, it's annoying. Sorry viewers, keep trying. 
I've got a lock on somebody. I'm not sure which one it is. Give me that guy. Give me that guy. I will not lock the threat. I'm going to have to try and fly over this guy and attack the... Oh, damn it. I'm going to lock him manually. Sod it. Oh, God. This is... Fun. Cap, danger close. I know. I'm trying so hard to lock that guy. Please! Die! Bandit. F4. 12 o'clock low. Uh, Two miles. And the winner of the race is Dale Earnhardt. Only we're not racing, pal. God, I... is going down. Rio's annoying. Right. I... All right, I got the next guy locked. I'm ready. I'm on him. Fire, fire, fire. Fox one. Fox one as well. I'm just firing everything now. Take the guy to the right. That's pretty much what happened in real life. Did you get your guy, Simba? Nope. But he's stalling out in a climb. Oh, thank God. He splashed. Wasn't quite the video I wanted to make, viewers, but that's combat. Simba, do north for 20. Friendly's in contact. Cap merge. F4, 12 o'clock low. One Flash. mile. There's one, there's another one somewhere. Where is he? He is to your nine o'clock right now. Going down. Do you see him fire? I'm working, I'm looking. He's got a lot of me. He is three, two, three, or three, three, three for far. We have a bogey, Phantom. Seven o'clock north, you now fire. Shit. Shit, he's on our six. Do some of that pilot shit. Apparently he's I'm on the six. Oh, visual, 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 visual. visual. Dog fight. I'm guns only. Six o'clock. Simba. Got him. Seven o'clock. Take the shot. Take the shot. I am being spiked. Be warned. I am being spiked. You're being spiked by fire. Fire. Right, don't do it. Put one flare out. Put one flare out. And nope, you're good. You're good. I'm for a clock. So I'm attacking this guy now. I'm, I'm on his six. I'm on his six. 12 o'clock, showing 600. Right, I'm We're in a really dogfight fight with him. I have control of the dogfight. So just I'm be, in. ends with caution. All right. All right, viewers, here we go. We're fast at 590. All right, who just went high? I We're went really high, fast, bandit's man. gone low. Bandit's between some clouds. Yeah. Right dogfight, feel free to engage. Fire and the bandit are in formation. One o'clock. Uh, I got one down low, going down low through the clouds. That's uh, Phantom. I'm in pursuit. Right dog fight. Is Those are parachute. GCI, is it. it just one hostile GCI? Yes, this is one hostile left. Simba has missile out. Yeah, Roger, I'm um, evacuating. Six. Closing. We're really through the soup. I've aborted. Progress. Splash. Oh. Bandit is down. Is GCI, yeah, is, uh, are we picture clean? Picture is clean. Is Orion good? Orion is safe. Mm -hmm. Viewers, it was ugly, 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 Jeez, ugly, okay. as all these Tomcat engagements seem to be. But we just beat four veteran level uh, Phantoms for no losses, and we didn't even lose the Orion. We'll go for a proper attack view later. For the time being, we need to get back and land, if we can remember how to do that. Please, Vector. Vector, one, two, two, magnetic for one, three, seven nautical miles. Well done, boys. We've still got it. Cap fuel is, oh my God, three. I got three. I'm not getting back. I got six one. I must admit, I had a lot of panic there. All right, let's see how far we can get on 3,000 pounds of fuel on the Tomcat viewers. Whoa. Climbing towards What did you say that heading was? Uh, one, two, one magnetic, one, two, three, true. Like whatever I did, I could not lock the guy I wanted. I tried, I tried all the different options to try and get him on that, you know, on that. Uh, controller on my port side one mile. Is that, a, who's that? That's you are with uh, you are in formation with fire, Dad. Fire speed check. Uh, eight hundred seventy-five. Eight hundred seventy-five. Sorry, point eight seven. Roger. Simba, the rest of the flight is to your. Uh, my left. 10 I got visual. I had the same problem you did, Cap. I had that third guy locked that you ended up shooting down as well. Yeah. And then I tried to transition to the fourth guy, and I just I couldn't pick him up. Gotcha. I really struggle to work with the AI going. There's uh, some good PAL modes to learn about. Yeah, uh, that's how I did it. That's how I did it. 10 nautical miles. And uh, you know, Cat, if you go to the Grim Reapers mm. Stoneburner training server, mm. you can get a lot of practice in with the different uh, aiming modes, learn to work with Jester, how to choose specific targets. All of that. It's that? all available on the Grim Reapers training server. I about you guys. I just use just the basic power mode, you know, where it scans the whole hard up to 20 miles. That basically serves me with everything when I'm in control. 
we had that uh, thing installed, I could launch a tanker for you. Oh yeah, you could, couldn't you? Uh, Olympus. Yeah, a bit late now, I'm afraid. Auto pilot has control. Ooh, hello Simba, I see you. What's your fuel state, fire? 2.9. Uh, 2.4. Oh, come on, little Tomcat. I'm 5,000. Right, Crack and burner to catch you guys. You're landing last then. Who's descending? Oh, for whatever reason, my autopilot's descending. I'm not sure why. Right, is there anything I can jettison to make this lighter? Get rid of those three missiles you have. Yeah. Your emergency jettison switch, Cap. Uh, just up and to the left of your um, landing gear. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They are carted, look at that. Well, maybe they're not, maybe they're just pushed off, right? Right, I am lighter and more efficient than ever. 2,000 pounds of fuel. Carrier is on my TID. Fire come uh, left 15 degrees. Copy. Right, let's run through carrier rocks, guys. We've got an angle of attack index, so we have, haven't we? Check. Uh, okay, don't need to worry about that. There's a landing mode. Is there? Yep. It's the bottom push button on Visual. the right. Yep, got that. That's good. Flaps to full. Gear down, hook down. All right. Oh, how hard can it be? Cap, you are 50 nautical miles on heading for the carrier. All right. right. Shop at the idle and do about a 15 degree dive. All right, standby. Autopilot is. Disengaged. Coming down on the power. Diving. Going to landing mode. Or I forget. Hit. Two point two. One point seven. Distance four or three eight nautical miles. Roger. How's the vector? Your vector is good. It would have been nice to give him a Tacan. You want a Tacan on the carrier now? Well, I'm afraid to tell you, Simba, that his Tacan set is broken. 100% the reason. I'm burning exactly zero fuel right now. Which is nice. Right, entering IFR. I'm sure everything will be fine. I can see Cap's head wiggling about in the cockpit, but Chester appears to be asleep. Yeah, that's a him problem. He was asleep during that frigging combat as well. He bollocked me for going too fast during book fight. Uh, distance is one eight nautical miles. Roger. All right, well, I should see out as soon as I get out of this. Do you, you want course of magnetic or true? Uh, presumably magnetic. Okay, magnetic one one two. Simba, you're catching up with Cap and you're below him. That is the sea. Hello, the sea. Right, can I see a carrier group? Carrier is 13 miles ahead of you. Oh, there's a carrier right there. Eyes are getting a bit old, viewers. Carrier is heading 278 magnetic. Uh, west, he's going west. Okay, fine. Uh, I pretty much go straight into downwind. Fuel is 1400. Oh, easy. Well, we just did 160 nautical miles on 2000 pounds of fuel. That's not bad, guys. Just saying. The wings are back, Simba. In fact, it then. Yep. All right. Hook down. Pop. Uh, feet on rudder bar. Uh, right. I'm basically entering my uh, entering my pattern now. Entering my downwind. All yep. right. I'm gonna stick with you, and I'll do an overhead carrier break. Hello, mother. Alrighty then, gear coming down. Travelling. Deploy. Flaps. Travelling. Deploy. Can't remember. I lift the voice, so we'll just land manually. Alright, off radial. Mm -hmm. Cap, call the ball. Uh, what is this? Three quarters of a mile, isn't it? Alright. We should wait. Cap. Cool. Increasing speed. 
Right, just waiting for my E-bracket now. Now, where is my E-bracket? Am I configured, controller? Yep, yes, landing gear is down, but you are high. Yeah, it's nice. On radio. All right, I'll give it a try. Where are you at, Fire Dad? I'm um, turning left into the into the uh, final here right now. Okay, yeah. watch up. A little power. power. Going around. Sorry, be a bit rusty. I no, like jet. What am I expecting? About 130, I suppose. 140, 150, just whatever's comfortable. Fire Dad did an extremely long downwind. Yes, I did. Uh, I've yeah. successfully landed this aircraft one time on the aircraft carrier, so. Yeah, there are two of you in pattern. I'm not sure who's closer. One of you is way high. It's those, those two. All right, I'm on Clyde Slope, on Vector, on Radial. I see the closer guy without any gear. Is that just my graphics? Yep, I see gear. And you're high fire. And you need to come to the right. Or my right. I don't know which right it is. Good little power. There you I go. I pulled cut up it. too much. I cut oh. it. I, I pulled up too soon. Good job. A little bit rusty. Simba, you need to come right on my screen. Yep. Don't worry. The boat's moving. So is that his left? I have my figured left. it out. Okay. Yes, it's, it's my left. There's. He would give the directions, the pilot's directions. I would have thought. Okay, right. there you got. You're right on the bracket. I'm on the final now. I'm way, I'm ways behind. I. All right, visual on you, Cap. All right. Four wire. Explodes in but. Okay, right. Cap, you are on course, but high. Roger, Roger. Dealing with it. Deck is showing clear. Come on, slow down, you big lug. A little high, but you're looking good. Second time lucky. I'll take that, guys. Uh. LSO shaking his head, man. That was a one wire. Oh, apparently the LSO is shaking his head. Tim, stay on, Simba. Stay on. True Grim Reaper's finished, that is. All right, we should fire. fire down. Fire, come left, and you're high. I'm gonna push Simba back on. No, are you good? As long right. as the boat doesn't turn. If I put my nose between your fins, you won't go over. Look at our teamwork, viewers. It literally makes the dream work. Careful, you don't want to do what I did. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a little rough. Well but done. I'm yeah, on the deck. Same here. All right, I'm just <laughs> securing Simba. All right, come apart. Fire's gonna push me over. Go on, do it. <laughs> Alright viewers, we're going to go and have a little look at the tack view to see what we can see. So, we take off. So do the Phantoms. That really was close, wasn't it? We drop our tanks. How close does he get? How close? Yeah, he does some chat. Look, Simba fires early. That's what upsets him. Right there. Probably out of Wes. So Simba fires at 36 miles, which is out of Wes. But what he's doing is protecting that guy. Look, it just sets him off as well. So how close was he? Five miles, one more mile and he would have shot. So it's a good job he did fire out of Wes actually. And then the chaos ensues. Look at me, I'm pratting around, trying to lock the right frigging guy. I miss, I'll just, I'll just have to go manual in the end. Fire, shoot him down. Simba goes into a dog, uh, goes into combat, shoots him down. Right, so I hit that guy. Then I just go nuts and just shoot everything at everyone, miss. Which is actually kind of what happened in the real event. Right, I go after that guy. Shoot him down with aim nines. Fire comes in. All the confusion happens. As happened in the real one. Dogfight ensues. I keep him padlocked. I'm very rusty with the Tomcat, so I let one of the boys... I literally got in formation with him. You know what? What you didn't do, you didn't shoot us down. So that's okay with me. Simmer comes in with a Fox Bomb, which is a perfectly safe missile to fire. Uh, that's it. Any fly back and land? Any uh, comments from you guys? I just wonder why that F4 in the initial engagement didn't shoot at you. Uh, yeah, well, I would love to know. Uh, I'll show you viewers just to make sure we're not cheating. Um, or double check, maybe is a better word. So he was the second one, wasn't he? 
So set all normal, set veteran skill level as all of them, set with missiles as the correct ones to real life, set as cap, he just didn't fire, and that's kind of a him problem. I suspect he was probably targeting fire behind me. He probably had the same problem as me modeled, I'd imagine. That's a reenactment. I hope you enjoyed it, and bye-bye.